Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood Coats of here, and welcome back to a new episode of Growing With You. Let me start off by saying, I'm so sorry for making you wait longer for this week's episode. It's been a busy week for me, and I had very little time to put this video together than I normally do. Other than that guys, I really appreciate all the new subscribers. I hope you guys enjoy all the current and upcoming content. For this week's video, we're going to go over week 4 and 5 of Veg. Since week 4 was very uneventful, I ended up cutting down that footage to 5 minutes. You guys have been so awesome for interacting so much with all the video, so I wanted to give you guys a longer video while catching you guys up to me. Anyways, that's enough explaining. Let's get into this week's episode. We left our girls off last week with their second and final topping for our manifold hub. This week, we're going to let our new 8 girl tips develop so they can get tall enough to train down. At this point, we are 6 weeks from seed. To start off the week, I yet again just fed our girls our nutrient solution of cleanse, cow mag, grow A, and B at a pH of 5.8 and the EC of 1200. I did my best to make sure the girls got all their cocoa wet. I was only feeding once a day at this point in our grow. I was really hoping our gals were going to be ready to flip at this point, but obviously, they're nowhere near ready to be flipped, and will probably need another 2 weeks until they'll be at my desired height to flip. I was happy to see that our stocks were growing significantly, and was taking this as a good sign that our roots were starting or at least trying to bounce back. Around the beginning of the week, I trimmed off the fan leaves connected to our very short growth tips because they were getting in the way and some were uneven due to not getting the same amount of light. You could tell all 8 growth tips were now the priority and are starting to develop nicely. I didn't know what to expect when it came to how these growth tips are going to grow. But I'm hoping that similar to how our mainline plants would progress, I do expect there to be a lot more training this season compared to our previous grows. I was also really happy to see that our new growth was really showing signs of being healthy, and I was really hoping it would stay like that for the time being. But we'll see. This zinc and iron deficiency will look like it's gone one day, but then bounce back the next. On the last day of week 4, I noticed some of the girls' lower leaves were damaged from some kind of pest, obvious from the random hose in our girls' leaves. I decided to throw in some tea drops and also spray my veg tent and the girls with some spindle sand. Tea drops for the fungus gnats that have been developing in our cocoa, which also by the way, this is the earliest I've ever seen gnats develop in any of my grows and I feel like it's going to be annoying to deal with. Tea drops is a highly effective solution designed for use in any growing medium or hydroponic system. It's safe to use with any nutrient regimen and will not affect beneficial microorganisms. It's non-toxic and completely inert. It will not interact with our girls in any way. It will just kill off all of these pesky fungus nests and larvas, forcing them out of the cocoa for a little while. Spinosad is a pesticide to control bagworms, tent caterpillars, and chewing insects, along with almost any other pest that could be damaging your plants. You mainly want to use it early on and maybe right before flower. I only use it when necessary. To use spindle sand, I fill up a 32 ounce spray bottle with water, then simply add half an ounce of spindle sand to the bottle and shake thoroughly to make sure it's mixed well. Again guys, like usual, you only want to spray this like almost any other foliage right before the lights are off as to not burn your girls. I recently had a sub explain the seriousness of the damage that can occur from spraying during the lights on. The subs in your spray will build up and that's what will burn holes in your leaves. You guys want to be wary of this, sorry to say but my phone died while I was watering and spraying so I don't have much footage. But that's where week 4 ended guys, let's move on to what happened during week 5, which I personally enjoyed more.
Week 5 started off really well. The girls were starting to stack those nodes on our new mains and were starting to get bushy. Which was really nice to see, so much that I decided to get started early with our training as to not let the girls get in each other's way too much. I started to train down the 8 mains of each one of the girls. It took some time, but it was much needed. Giving each of our growth tips some space will benefit them in the long run. Especially when they're not growth tips anymore, but colas. To train, I popped 8 holes in each of our pots and placed twisty ties in each one to have them ready. I then trained down our center mains first on each plant, making sure they were as even as possible with each other. Once I had them at the desired height, I did the same with the four outer mains. Since they were pretty short, it took less force to get those at an even height. I take a while to get each plant done, since I try to be really delicate. While I did this, I also had just gone ahead and gave the girls each 60 ounces of plain water and Bigfoot Mycorrhize Concentrate, which contains endomycorrhize, biochar kelp, worm castings, and humid acid. Mycorrhizo fungi form a symbiotic band with plant roots, creating a microbial web. The microbial web accesses and absorbs water and vital nutrients. Bigfoot concentrate must be diluted in water. You drench the solution into the root zone, ensuring the mycorrhiza makes direct contact with the roots. Since my girls are already in 5 gallon pods, I gave them 60 ounces each. I did this to give them an adequate amount of runoff. This was around the time Green Ninja had started giving me the advice on how to fix the, my overwatering problem. Green Ninja stated that the approach he's found that works best to address overwater plants regardless of pre-fleshing is to let the cocoa dry back 60 to 70 percent. This may sound extreme, but the roots are overwatered and need to dry back in order for the plant to have access to adequate oxygen to stimulate new healthy root growth. This may take 1 to 3 days depending on how overwatered the plant is. Repeat the whole process again and again until the plant is back to good health. The plant will show you it's getting better with the display of strong fluffy white roots and the need to be fergated more often. If the root zone pH is really high, then a pre-flush with loads of cow mag water at a 5.5 pH and 0.4 EC till the runoff of pH sits between 5.5 and 5.7 is okay as long as you fricotate with a mild strain solution, base nutrient solution at around an EC of 0.7 to 0.8 and a pH of 5.5 to 5.7. No cow mag. Cow mag is not needed with cocoa fiber if the base nutrient EC is in check, unless you are using RO water, to which you should only need 0.4 EC cow mag. And I do have RO water, so I am doing the 0.4 of cow mag with every watering. The reason for the lower pH flush is to help to lower the pH faster, and due to extended dryback period, the slower pH will race in the root zone. So if you fricotate an overwatered root zone at a 5.8 pH and leave the cocoa to dry back for an extended couple of days, the pH will naturally raise and likely higher than the needed threshold. A very important point to make is that if you do go for the extended FCC dryback to adjust the root issues, then the EC in the root zone will raise higher as the cocoa dries back. So it is imperative to initially use a mild EC of 0.7 to 0.8 and make sure to get plenty of runoff each fergation while adjusting the overwatered root zone to wash these extra waste salts away. If this is not applied, then you run the risk of damaging the already messed up roots further. Which is kind of what I did this time around by starting to water with my EC at a full strain a couple of days after transplanting along with watering daily with water right beforehand and afterwards. I decided it was best to follow Green Ninja's advice to fix our problem since it takes a while to even get the plant stable again using this method. According to him, so after watering with this flush I decided I was going to give the girls 3 days to dry back.
Once the girls were done being trained, it took them a day and a half to really bounce back fully. The first day they were pointed up, but still looked somewhat mangled, but by the second day, they were all looking really nice. From here, all I planned to do was keep these arms as even as possible to keep our flat canopy, while also making sure none of our grotes were getting covered by other fan leaves. Spreading our manes out didn't help much with the overcrowdedness of the girls. Our fan leaves were still clearly having a hard time getting some room. On top of that, I noticed that our girls are starting to show signs of our sink and iron deficiency coming back, with some of our tips turning white and other leaves showing our pale discoloration on the leaves. It's weird because this will come and go. It's interesting to see though. I wanted to give the girls some room to breathe and also to make sure that our mangrove tips were the ones getting the most attention from the light. So I trimmed the leaves and grab tips from the lower nodes, leaving the middle of our canopy naked. Don't worry, it will look like it just did soon enough guys. I did the same to the three eat those cookies plants, but one a little easier on them, since they seem to be getting hit the hardest with our deficiencies. While I was recording this, I noticed that there was some small mushrooms growing out of our cocoa at the base of our stock, where our one pine bags are at. Now as far as I know, this is not common. I found a short answer on reddit from what might be going on. Which read that generally, cocoa is a pretty inert media, which I've stated before. But you're not going to find much decomposition mushroom food in the cocoa itself. I would guess that revegging the plant has stressed it and killed off some of the root structure. He was answering another predator's question by the way. The root structure is likely what the mushrooms are feeding off. That's not a bad thing. They will consume the decay and produce good nutrients unless by some chance those are weed killing mushrooms from planted eggs. Oh, and pulling out the mushrooms won't do anything to combat the fungus. Mushrooms are the fruiting bodies of the fungus and mostly it lives as a net like arrangement of cells called mycelium within the media. When you pull mushrooms out of your cocoa, you are causing as much damage to the fungus as you do when you pull apples off of an apple tree. So I decided not to worry too much about this and just let them be, not wanting to stretch too much on it. Other than that, I continued with trimming our girls. I honestly left the banana hammock girls pretty naked at this point, but they seem like the dominant strain in the tent, and I feel like they'll bounce back well from this, even with our overwatering deficiencies. A majority of the time that I'm letting these girls grow, I just had to pop in to make sure our growth tips aren't being covered. By the next day, the girls were perking up and praying at the light. It was pleasing to see them so happy. Our canopy was even, our girls are growing, the stocks are getting huge, and our cocoa is drying out at the moment. Our girls are still getting hit hard by the iron and sink the efficiency at this point. But I'm not stressing too much guys, it's the beginning of actually doing the extended drybacks properly for me, so it's going to take some time for the issue to be fixed at the moment. I'm going to finish off this week with a measurement of our girls, most of which at the time were at 6 to 8 inches from the soil. I wanted them 10 to 12 inches from the soil to flip, so we'll still have to give them a little while longer, like I had said. 
Other than that, guys, I have nothing else for you guys this week. Thank you so much for watching all the way through, if you made it here. And again, I'm so sorry for making you guys wait so long for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. We're about to go through the struggle of the girls being temperamental during these extended drybacks, but I know they'll come out better after it. We'll come back next week to water these girls. I'll try to have our week 6 episode Thursday, guys. See you then. Enjoy the rest of this nice week. Also, give the video a like and sub if you haven't. Anyways, guys, again, thank you. That was really...